about a third of the people that we meet um, at diagnosis have uh, limited stage disease or um, disease that's confined within a hemithorax. The rest of patients have more extensive stage disease with disease outside of the chest, predominantly bones, liver, adrenal glands, and brain. For patients with limited stage disease, their disease is felt to be potentially curable. And the approach to therapy is a combination of chemotherapy and radiation. Radiation can either be once daily for six weeks, or there is data supporting twice daily or BID radiation, and there's biologic rationale for that. So the American trial that's looking at these two different radiation approaches continues to accrue. A year, an English trial that's been reported showed no difference. Um, so we await um, confirmatory data. Generally, for patients who are very motivated, I recommend twice daily radiation. If we can um, do that for, with a family and transportation, um, I, I, I tend to do that off of trial. For patients with limited stage disease, we also have evidence that um, prophylactic cranial irradiation improves survival. Certainly, given um, the disparate um, results in patients with extensive stage disease, sort of a relook at PCI. Um, there are trials that are planned, such as the MAVERICK trial that's really exploring the use of PCI in both the limited stage and extensive stage populations to see whether CT or MRI surveillance is a reasonable option. For most patients, though, those patients with extensive stage disease, chemotherapy is the initial treatment. Again, that's palliative therapy. We know that without treatment, patients with um, extensive stage disease generally live on the order of months, between three and six months. When we do plain chemotherapy with the backbone of platinum and utopicide, survival we think about and the survival that's been shown in recent trials is around 10 months. Um, we know that a great number of patients will have progressive disease um, within three months, and in those patients we consider um, second-line therapy for. There are another cohort of patients that have refractory disease at the get-go who never have a response or a progressive disease within 45 days of treatment. Those patients have less of a response to second-line therapy. And those patients who do quite well for six months or so who have long responses to chemotherapy, those patients will often retreat with cisplatin and etoposide. In the relatively recent um, past, we've now incorporated immunotherapies, and there have been two large trials that have demonstrated improvements with Im immunotherapy and chemotherapy, and I think we now have a better frontline standard for our patients, and that's really what I talked to our patient, who is so well um, about as a treatment approach. Often patients that we um, that are diagnosed with small cell, we find out pretty early. It's a histologic diagnosis. Um, unlike non-small cell lung cancer, where we wait for a number of different molecular tests or PDL1, in small cell lung cancer, so far that's been less relevant. Um, often um, we're unable to do it because cells tend to be necrotic. Um, but we have been able to capture TMB and PDL information in about a third of patients on clinical trials. Thus far, um, those parameters have not been helpful. There's no biomarker that's been very helpful for selecting therapy in the frontline setting. And I'll talk about that in the, um, in the paradigm of immunotherapy in just a minute. But we generally don't do molecular testing unless it's part of a research effort. We know there are ubiquitous mutations in P53 and RB, but beyond that, we haven't been really able to detect um, actionable mutations. And so generally, I don't get tumor mutational burden. I don't do genetic testing, nor do I do PDL1 on my patients with small cell lung cancer.